one um, is done at 421. I think that'll work, yeah. So, yeah, let's 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 do this song in the next one, and then we'll get going. I think we'll be in good shape. All right, sounds good. Okay, thanks. I got two minutes left. Thank you. Thank you to these two boys for all their hard work the past few years. Give them a round of applause. Thanks, boys. And our senior girls. Just stay there for a second. Thank you. Charlie Heather Shaw. Daughter of Veronica and Richard Pollock. Liliana Wagner, daughter of Toby and Jessica Wagner. Thank you as well to these two girls for all their hard work in the last few years. Hold a round of applause for our girls. And our seniors and their parents. Parents, we can't thank you enough for all your support the past few years. We really appreciate it. Go Eagles!
The following is a presentation of Dakota Radio Group Sports and DRGnews.com. You're listening to coverage of area high school sports on 1060 KGFX. You can also listen or watch this game online at DRGnews.com. Now, here's David Burrow. Thank you, Chuck, and hi, everyone. Happy Saturday to you from Frigid Wall. Well, it's frigid just about everywhere in this part of the world right now as the Stanley County Buffaloes would like to stop their skid. The Buffalo Boys have dropped three in a row, but they'll try to end that today. We are in Wall. No, we're not at that certain store. We're not even at the Big Dinosaur. We are at Wall High School as the Stanley County Buffaloes take on the Wall Eagles in boys basketball on this Saturday in high school basketball on 1060 AM, 107.1 FM. KGFX is brought to you by First Dakota National Bank, Avera, St. Mary's Hospital, Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union, Fisher Rounds and Associates Insurance and Real Estate, Ferding Electric, Owahi Federal Credit Union, and Peer Physical Therapy and Rehab. The live video is, of course, going. Just look for it at the KGFX page at drgnews.com or the DRG News app brought to you by Golden Buffalo. And it's brought to you by Bauman Lumber in Wagner Auto and our video scoreboard sponsor, Sioux Nation in Fort Pier. And our in-game sponsors include Becky Potts of State Farm Insurance, the South Dakota Attorney General's Office Division of Consumer Protection, Lynn's Dakota Mart in Fort Pier, CHS Midwest Cooperative, also the South Dakota Office of Highway Safety, Bauman Lumber, they'll bring you our player of the game following today's game, and Wegner Auto. Wegner Auto keeps you on top of who's ahead in the action this afternoon with the Wegner Auto scoreboard. Wegner Auto, the one place to go. They're South Dakota's oldest auto dealer in here since 1907, and you know, not too far away is the annual extravaganza that is the Blizzard Sale. Thank you for joining us. Our studio coordinator is Heather. Well, the Buffaloes come in, as we say, with three straight losses. Now the Chamberlain a week ago, Thursday at home in Fort Pier. Then we're blasted again by Potter County in Gettysburg. That was on Monday night. And then, boy, the White River Tigers do a number on the Buffs, 280 to 42 in Parkview Auditorium on Thursday evening. So the Buffs would like to get some things going. They have had problems turning the ball over lately. They have had problems hitting shots. It really got away from them on uh, Thursday night in the game against White River. It drops the Buffaloes to seven and seven. Counting today, there are still four, uh, five games remaining in the regular season. on Tuesday evenings we'll have for you here on KGFX at around 725. Then on Friday the Buffaloes go to Langford to take on Langford area. And then from Monday, that's February 22nd, it'll be the Miller Rustlers coming to Parkview Auditorium. We want to let you know we're adding that game to our schedule and you'll hear that here on KGFX around 725 on Monday, February 22nd before the regular season ends for the Buffs on Thursday, February 25th in Bowdle against North Central. So there's still some time for the Buffaloes to make things better, but again, it's almost a sure thing that that Region 6A game in the first week of March for a Sodak 16 spot, it's almost certainly going to be against Mulbridge Pollock, but uh, the Buffaloes know they want to put some wins together here if they want to have a chance to host that game instead of having to make the trip to Mulbridge in that first week of March. So uh, now's as good as time as any. You know Max Foth feels for his team to try to get things turned around a little bit. Girls action, by the way, has already happened. We had planned to bring you that game, but uh, unfortunately, no uh, girls JV game today. They have some injuries and illnesses, and uh, the Wall Eagles, pretty good ball club, by the way, in their region and class B there behind White River in Region 7. Walls now 14-5 and five after beating Stanley County today 44-20. to 20. Jordan Sosa had eight points in that game for the Buffalo. So we have boys action ahead for you here in Wall as the Stanley County Buffaloes meet the Wall Eagles. 
This is the Becky Possible State Farm pregame show. Becky Possible State Farm Insurance and Pure, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. One more from Wall in two minutes. This is high school basketball on 1060 AM and 107.1 FM KGFX. If you to earn a 30% discount on your auto insurance, then here's your chance. Potsdam State Farm has an updated version of the Drive Safe and Save app, and drivers everywhere are enjoying the rewards. Millions are now saying it, don't mess with my discount, and you will too. Just download the Drive Safe and Save app from State Farm to get started, or call Potsdam State Farm agent's office and they'll be happy to sign you up. Call 224-4173, Potsdam State Farm Insurance, and learn more today. He weighs only 22 pounds. He sleeps most of the day, but he has a lot of squeaky toys. And who, boy, does he like to run. If your new puppy or other addition to your family has turned your starter home from cozy to cramped, it might be time to talk to a member of the First Dakota National Bank's home loan team about the competitive rates on our more room for the dog to run loans. Bank yourself at home with First Dakota, because who knew a puggle could take up so much space? Equal housing lender, member FDIC. At Avera Health Plans, we know your egg business is vital to South Dakota, and affordable health insurance is essential to running that business. As your health insurance partner, we'll help to lighten the load of managing these expenses in an uncertain market. We're dedicated to rural health care with extensive preventative care services that are good for communities. We'll work with you to create a plan that's both affordable and effective so your employees have the coverage they need when they need it. You don't have to wait. Call your agent or get a quote at AveraHealthPlans.com slash save. There's an app for everything, including high school sports from the stations of DRT Media Group. Download the DRT News app brought to you by the Golden Buffalo Casino from the App Store or Google Play. It takes only a moment so you'll have it in time for this game. See live and archived video of all games. And when you select your favorite station during the live stream, the video will immediately pop up. See Central South Dakota High School Sports on your phone or mobile device with the DRG News app brought to you by the Golden Buffalo Casino. Download it now at the App Store or Google Play. We can focus a little bit more as we continue in the Becky Possible State Farm pregame here in Wall, Stanley County Buffalo's Wall Eagles on this Saturday afternoon. Here's how it stands going into this day in Region 6 in Class A. Chamberlain at the top of the seed point standings going in 45.375. We can tell you the Cubs lost today to Hanson at the DWU Culver's Classic in the Mitchell at the Corn Palace 56 to 42. We'll tell you more about that as the day continues. The Moverage Pollock is at 44, and the Buffs are now at 41.071. So it is going to take uh, a lot to happen, and it, and it starts with Stanley County putting some wins together if they want to have a chance to be second. Remember, only four teams in Region 6 are playing. Miller's going to be fourth, and uh, they will play the top team, who more than likely will be Chamberlain in that uh, regional round, which will be in the first week of March. We're, you know, we've got a pretty good idea. It'll probably be in that Thursday of the first week of uh, March, uh, so which would be the fourth. But that's just uh, you know, a fairly educated guess at this point from Darren Boyle, and I believe everything Darren Boyle tells me. <laughs> but anyway, that's how it uh, looks at this point. So again. Uh, Really, time's now for the Buffs to try to get this going and turn this around. They've had great performances from Nathan Cook lately. He had another double-double in that loss to White River on Thursday. But, well, there's just not a lot of help from a lot of places lately. The turnovers have been happening. Shots just basically have not been falling for a, a team that uh, have been going pretty well at 7-4. and four, But it has uh, dropped off. They've, uh, you go back, the last win, of course, was the one two weeks ago today, that excellent game in Lower Brule, where the Buffaloes uh, beat the Sioux in overtime 63-62. to 62. So Stanley County is saying, uh, hey, it's, uh, it's about time. Let's stop this, and we'll try to do that here in Wall today. Now, what about this uh, Wall team? Well, they are in, uh, of course, Region 7 in Class B. They're 7 and 8. And so that puts them in uh, the fourth spot in this region behind White River and Lyman. Good win, by the day, uh, by the way, today for Lyman that we'll tell you about a little later. Ryan Dinger's team 
in not a good way either. They've lost four in a row. They've lost to Lyman, White River, Kadoka area, and Phillip in their last four. It's been over two weeks since they've won a nine-point win here over Hill City. They've beaten Miller earlier this season. They beat Bennett County. They have uh, beaten Edgemont. That was way back in the first game of the year. So it's the uh, two teams that really are desperate for a victory and of course one of them will have it today one of these losing streaks we know is going to end and let's look at today's starting lineups first for the stanley county buffalo 6-1 junior lathan prince starts along with a 6-1 junior cormac duffy 5-11 junior dason titsy also draws the start along with the 6-5 junior strand scott and the 6-3 senior nathan cook for head coach Max Folt in his sixth season as head coach of the Buffaloes with a record of 59 wins and 63 losses. Damon Hoftaser is his assistant. Here's how the Wall Eagles line up. Tactinus, one of the two seniors on this team who was saluted in between the girls and boys games, starts for Wall. Tinas is a 6-2 player. Also starting is Brody Sundahl. Brody is a freshman getting a chance to start as his play has improved throughout the season he is six foot cedar amiot a 6-1 sophomore also starts this is as we say a very young wall team reed hansen a 6-4 junior also starts along with kane krogman krogman is a 6-2 junior so that's how it starts for the wall eagles his head coach is ryan dinger his uh, assistants are tanner hancock and Conrad Jurstad. So those are the lineups. Now, we'll tell you about the law on the court. And that's brought to you by the South Dakota Attorney General's Office Division of Consumer Protection. We'll take a 30-second break here in Wall and then introduce you to the officials for today's game here on KGFX. Monitor your accounts, especially during the holidays. Remember to track your accounts frequently for any fraudulent transactions, whether through mobile banking or online access. Sign up for notifications or text alerts from your bank that might indicate suspicious activity. This can range from mobile deposit alerts, big purchase alerts, password change alerts, etc. If you receive an alert, immediately reach out to your bank to ensure it is not a scam. Do not click on the link. With questions, contact the South Consumer Protection Division, 1-800-300-1986. It's an officiating crew from the Black Hills for today's game. David Rogers, Dwayne McPherson, and Randy Stanton are the game officials today. Gentlemen, thank you very much. The Law on the Court is brought to you by the South Dakota Attorney General's Office Division of Consumer Protection. Wall in their home white uniforms, white and blue their colors. Blue numerals and letters, eagles, written in script above a block print number, or, in, or block print, I should say, above a block print number on the front, block print number on the back, blue piping. Stanley County on the road, uh, purple uniforms. Purple and gold, of course, are the Buffalo's colors. Gold numerals and white trim. Stanley above, county below, a block print number on the front, a block print number on the back with the Gold piping on the sides of the shorts that says Buffs on each side. So we're not too far from the start of this afternoon's game here in Wall with the lineups about to be introduced. We have a couple of moments, so let's tell you what we have coming up. As mentioned, Tuesday evening here on KGFX from Parkview Auditorium, Buffalo Boys of Stanley County hosting Mobridge Pollock. We'll be with you around 725. Again, almost without doubt, a preview of the game that will send one of those teams to the Sodak 16 in the first week of March, but they play in the regular season next week. Now, also on Tuesday evening on River 92.7, it's the next edition of Pure Governor Girls Basketball as they'll host the Tatanka of Lakota Tech at uh, the Riggs High Gym. Uh, boy, what a comeback. Uh, what an attempt the Governor Girls made last night against an excellent winner team down double digits in the third quarter got to within five late lost by seven at 51 to 44. now uh next for after that uh, after stanley county host mobridge pollock in uh, boys basketball on tuesday girls action for the buffaloes at mobridge pollock on thursday and we'll have that for you 
on KGFX around 725 or so, and that will be on Thursday evening. So that's what's ahead, uh, and there's more that we'll tell you about a little later on. But we're just about ready to get going, so let's tell you that today's opening tip-off is brought to you by Lynn's Dakota Mart in Fort Pierre. And let's hear from them. Then we'll be back with the action in 30 seconds from Wall here on KGFX. Welcome to Lynn's Dakota Mart. Check out their selection in the meat, produce, deli department, and hardware, as well as the rest of the store. The freshest and best quality in the area. Don't see what you need? Just ask. The friendly staff is more than happy to help in any way possible. For any gathering, large or small, Lynn's Dakota Mart is there for you. Special orders and requests, too. Smart grocery shopping takes a little TLC. Lynn's Dakota Mart. Thrifty, local, and convenient. Let me make one slight correction, and, well, this, this is understandable. Austin Olson, who normally does not start for Wall, will instead start today, but on senior day, I guess that makes a whole lot of sense. So the five for Stanley County are Lathan Prince, Cormac Duffy, Dason Titsy, Strand Scott, and Nathan Cook. And the Wall starting five are Tactinas, Austin Olson, Cedar Emiot, Reed Hansen, and Kane Krogman. The DRG News app and at drgnews.com. Stanley County will shoot of the bucket to your right in the first half. They're in purple, wall in white. Duffy to jump center against Reed Hansen. It's Stanley County who has the first possession, and we hope you enjoy the action on this Saturday afternoon from wall. Lathan Prince on the right wing for a lob for Cook in the lane, and Nathan took a hop. That's a travel, and oh boy. Max Foth's got to be saying, oh, no, not again. Don't start this this early. 11 seconds into the game, a turnover already. And, boy, the Buffs have just been bitten by that bug lately. Against some pressure, Hansen to Olsen into the front court for Wall. Cook knocked it down, and then he's finally able to take it away. Nathan for Lathan Prince and a right baseline layup. And Stanley County scores first. There is more of what the Buffs want. They're up 2-0, 30 seconds into the game. Tactinas into the front court. Passes it for Amiot. Olsen back to Amiot. Swing on the left side for Tina's. Left corner. Here comes a three from Hansen. Little long. Nathan Cook. There is number rebound number one. Of course, we'll keep a close watch on that today. He brings it to the right side. Out front to Titsy. About a minute gone in the game. A 2 0 Stanley County lead. Lot for Cook in the lane. Down low. Scott under the baseline. He misses, but he is fouled. It's Reed Hansen with a push for the game's first foul, and Strand Scott will have a couple of shots at the line. 59 seconds gone in this game. And Strand has given Stanley County some good play on the baseline this year. Misses the first free throw here. He'll shoot again. Three-game losing streak for Stanley County. Four-game losing streak for Wall, so one of them's going to end today. Second free throw good for Scott. And Stanley County has the game's first three. They're up three to nothing, a minute gone. Against some pressure, Emiot does well to move through it. Tina's a left wing three, and Tack Tina's one of the two all seniors. Hits a three to tie the game at three. Open on the left wing and knocked it down. Duffy for Stanley County. Basket to our right. Titsy now between the rings. Dason right on the lane. Drop step, little hook pass. It came to Scott. Off Cook and Strand Scott rolled it in from four feet. And Stanley County's back in front, 5-3. And that's three for Strand. Prince nearly making a steal. He knocked it out of bounds at midcourt. And Wall will inbound. It'll be Tactinas to do so. Bounces it into Cedar Amion. Stanley County playing in a zone. Seen if... Tina's or others want to shoot them out of it again. Here's Tina's again with a left wing three. And again, he hit it. Tack Tina's gives Wall their first lead. It's six to five. He has all the Eagle points and a couple of three-pointers. 6.04 left in the first quarter. We're in Pennington County on this Saturday. Titsy, left baseline for Stanley County. Cut off, finds Cook in the lane. Right down the middle off the brace of the rim and rebounded by Reed Hansen for Wall. First miss for Stanley County after they'd made their first two shots. Bad pass. Titsy trying to gain it. Cook with some hustle on the floor. Does take it. 
Second turnover, front court Titsy, left baseline, left it for Scott in the middle, he put it in. Strand Scott with an easy one from four feet. And Stanley County's in the lead again at 7-6 with 5.26 in the first quarter. Amy Ott working against Titsy. Cedars in the front court, bounce back pass. Lathan Prince took it away. Lathan all the way to the baseline, he's fouled. Oh no, he walked, excuse me. He was at guilty of taking steps before he walked. Gavin Irving, the juniors into the game for the first time for the Buffs. He replaces Dason Titsy. And Evan Nordstrom's into the game too for the Buffaloes, another junior, Strand Scott. Takes a rest for the moment. 7-6, Stanley County, but it's Walls basketball. 5.05 left in the first quarter. Glad to have you with us. Tina's on the right side and in the right corner for Olsen. Up top to Cedar Amiot. Baseline, good pass to Hanson, lay in. Nice recognition there as Reed Hanson was free on the baseline. And Walls back in front by an 8-7 score, 447 in the first. Lob in the lane to Cook. Right baseline, it is Nordstrom for a right wing open three by Duffy. Good. Cormac Duffy, rough night for him the other night. He had some foul trouble. But he hits a three early on here in Stanley County's back in front. 10-8 with three and a half minutes gone. We've had four lead changes already. It is Hansen with a shot in the lane that's off the glass. And Evan Nordstrom rebounds for Stanley County. Into the front court as Prince backs it out. Left wing for Duffy, back up top to Nordstrom. White wing, it is Prince. Long three for Lathan, swish! Lathan, Prince, about from NBA range, and Stanley County's now up five at 13 to eight. 406 in the first steal. It is taken away by Dason Titsy. His shot blocked from behind. Nice play there by Cedar Amiot. It'll stay with Stanley County. And the Buffs won a 30-second timeout. We'll take 1-2 with 4-0-1 left in the first corner. Six in a row for Stanley County. They have opened up a 13-8 lead over Wall. And we're back to Wall in 30 seconds here on KGFX. Lower your payment with great rates from Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union. Now is the time to refinance your vehicle with rates as low as 2.49%, plus no payments for 90 days. The same friendly faces and customer service are at their new location, complete with convenient drive through lane on Garfield Avenue at the Northridge Plaza. Low rates and 90 days, no payments. Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union. Member NCUA. Little Flurry has put Stanley County in front by five at 13-8. We are one second away from being exactly midway through the first quarter here in Wall. Duffy left baseline, basket to our right for a left wing three by Prince that's off the front rim, and Cedar Emiot has the rebound. Wall down floor with a half circle jumper that is missing here by Reed Hansen, and Cormac Duffy has the rebound for Stanley County. Fast breaking, Cook for a layup and a foul. Nathan Cook's first two. Extends the Stanley County lead to seven points at 15 to eight. Cedar Emiot's foul is his first, and that's the second on Wall. Buffaloes haven't committed a foul yet. So Cook has his first two of the game. He'll try to complete the three-point play and make it a seven-point lead, but he missed everything, and in Wall will inbound. But 15 to eight, Stanley County. The Buffaloes have scored eight in a row, and they have full court pressure here. Amy on, however, speeds down the right alley and works past that. Into the right corner on the baseline. Krogman, first time he's touched the ball. Hand on the pass by Nordstrom, but there to pick it up for Wall is Amy on. 3.30 in the first. Right corner on the arc. Hansen with a jumper. That missed. Nathan Cook with rebound number two. For Stanley County. Wall's gone a little cold. Here is a left wing three. Duffy and that missed, but Nordstrom with an offensive board, and he left that one short. Krogman with a rebound for Wall. Pass nearly stolen, instead crashing into Amy on his Lathan Prince for the first Stanley County foul of the game. And Wall will inbound. That's six feet in the front court, right sideline. It's into Amiot. 15 to 8, Stanley County. Left wing three. Tina's tries another, but this one misses. But Reed Hansen has the offensive board trying to save it. And doing so is Sundle. Brody Sundle's into the game. 
and he was able to throw it off a Stanley County player, so Wall will maintain the possession with 2.57 left in the half. Sundell, normally a starter, didn't today. Austin Olson did instead, the senior. Amy on on right wing to Tactinas. Into the right corner, it is an 18-footer that is missing by Sundall, and the rebound comes down to Gavin Irving for Stanley County, but then a pass knocked out of bounds by Wall. It'll stay with the buffs as Dason Titsy's back into the game to replace Cormac Duffy. Titsy, Prince, Irving, Nordstrom, Cook. They're the five on the floor for Stanley County as they inbound to the bucket to our right with 2.40 remaining in the first quarter and a 15-8 lead. It's into Cook who drives on the left baseline but left it short. And Reed Hansen has rebound number three for the Wall Eagles who are down seven and haven't scored in a while. Tinas tries to change that. Thought about a three, now drives left baseline. Only oh, threw it into the backcourt, and that is a violation. It didn't hit anybody. Amy Ott went back to chase it, which was the thing to do to prevent Stanley County from a layup. Nathan Law comes into the game for Wall. Nathan is a 6'6 junior. Strand Scott is back in the lineup for Stanley County. Still on their 7-0 run. 2.20 left in the first quarter here in Wall. Stanley County 15, Wall 8. Again, the girls' action has already happened with Wall winning 44-20. to Ball lost by Cook. Third turnover picked up by Brody Sundle for Wall. Amy on walks it into the front court. Left wing for Tina's. Wall and wide of the basket to our left. Sundall hands it for Amy on. Still 20 on the shot clock. He's left of the lane. Guarded by Titsy. Right side for Hansen. Good feed inside for a baseline jumper, but it's left short by Sundall. And the rebound by Gavin Irving. Buffs want to push it. Sundstr uh, uh, Nordstrom with a miss as he left it short. And Nathan Law just into the game with a rebound for the Wall Eagles. Left baseline. Here is a shot that is missing by Tina's, and it's Nathan Cook with the rebound. And we have a foul here by Tack. Oh, it's a technical foul on Tack Tinas. For what for, you may hear head coach Ryan Dinger say. And I'm trying my best to eavesdrop. The official is making the explanation with which Ryan Dinger is not very pleased. So Gavin Irving will shoot a couple of technical free throws. It's a technical foul on Tynes. That's his first personal and the third team foul. So Irving with two free throws here. Chance for some bonus points. And Gavin hit the first. And it's 16-8 to eight Stanley County. And the Buffs have scored nine in a row. Irving one more with nobody in the line. Swish. 17-8 to eight Buffs. Stanley County with a 10-0 run. And a couple of freebies there. He must have said something, but again, it doesn't have to be a bad word. If you, if you say something which the officials think is showing them up in any way, they're going to put a T on you, and that probably is what happened. Titsy right wing to Prince. Three for Lathan. It's short. Rebound is going to end up in a Stanley County foul. And it's Strand Scott who went on the back of Reed Hansen. First on Strand, second team foul on Stanley County. It was 6 of 14 shooting, 2 of 4 on threes. Wall 3 of 9 shooting, 2 of 3 on three. So only one two-point bucket so far. And it has still been a while since Wall scored. Stanley County with 10 straight leads, 17 to 8. Bounce left of the lane for Law. Turnaround, half hook, it rolls in. So the drought is broken for Wall. They're down 17-10 at 107. Bad pass taken away, Brody Sundle. Stops at the baseline, but left the shot short. Reverse is good on the rebound by Cedar Amiot. Nice play. So a couple of buckets in a row for Wall. They're down five at 17 to 12. 50 seconds left in the first quarter. Lathan Prince for Stanley County. Right corner for Cormac Duffy, who's back into the game. 43 seconds in the lane for Cook. Left wing Prince. Open, now comes inside the yard. Shoots a 14-footer and hits. Seven in the first quarter for Lathan Prince. Stanley County's lead is seven at 19 to 12. 30 seconds left in the first quarter. One more second on the game clock, then shot clock, but here's a steal. It's taken away by Prince. Drives, oh, but the layup 
is left a little short. Good D there, and trying to come up with the ball, it's Luce who touched it last. Stanley County did. Nobody really gained that rebound, and Wall will inbound with 16 and a half seconds left, and that'll have a chance to bring Jay Veers, Ricardo Garcia, Andrew Fredrickson, and Jamie Juarez into the game for the last 16 and a half of this first quarter. Meanwhile, Nathan Law for Wall inbounds in front of his bench to Amy on 13 seconds. 11. Amy Ott's on the right wing. Nine seconds now. Bounce to Law down low, down to six seconds. Left wing Ethan Ferguson who's into the game. Passes. Four seconds. It's to Amy Ott. Now a jumper in the half circle is missing by Nathan Law. A follow is too late. It was after the buzzer. So we're through one quarter in Wall. A big run by the Stanley County Buffaloes. They had a 10-0 run during that first quarter and after one they lead Wall 19-12 on the Wagner Auto scoreboard. Wagner Auto, the one place to go. Second quarter from Wall in one minute here on 1060, 107.1 KGFX. Is your truck or fleet insurance a one-size-fits-all approach? The commercial line agents at Fisher Rounds & Associates know that each company fleet, owner-operator, or ag producer has unique coverage needs. We understand all the risks and liabilities, so we can create a customized policy that ensures you are fully covered. We're at your service, at your side. Fisher Rounds & Associates, serving your truck insurance needs with offices in Pierre, Mitchell, Rapid City, Sioux Falls, and Watertown. For reliable, safe, efficient, and economical electrical work, call Ferding Electric. Ferding Electric staffs licensed, knowledgeable electricians to help you with all your electrical projects. New construction, rewires, or upgrades, residential or commercial, Ferding Electric knows how to get the job done right. Call Ferding Electric at 224-8684. Stop in at 2903 East Elizabeth, just off the truck bypass. See Ferding.com or find them on Facebook. Ferding Electric, licensed electricians, quality service, and dependable products since 1956. Boy, Saturday afternoon basketball is always fun. Not that I mind night games, but games in the afternoon are neat on a Saturday. Wall inbounds to start the second quarter. Stanley County's up 19-12. They did lead by as many as nine, had that 10-0 run in the first quarter. Cedar Amy on for the Eagles with a bounce. Turnaround, nice move in the lane by Kane Krogman, who drives and scores. 19-14 Stanley County in the first 20 seconds of the second quarter. Cormac Duffy on left wing. Lobs in the left corner for Prince. Open for a moment, baseline. Now he stepped on the baseline. Prince commits a turnover, the fifth on Stanley County. Sabbath of 16 shooting in the first quarter for the Buffs, 44%. Wall is now at 43% on 6 of 14. Amy out for Wall. Pass Scott all the way to the rim. Layup. Count it with a foul. Cedar Amiot just put on the Jets, went past Scott, then was pushed by Nathan Cook for his first foul, and now the lead for Stanley County is down to three at 19 to 16, and Amiot will try to make it a two-point game here with the first free throw of the game for Wall. It's on the way. It's on the board. 19-17, Stanley County. The lead down to two. 7.15 left in the first half as Walls put on a little run here. Duffy on the left wing to Prince for Stanley County. Knocked down! Brody Sundol to Tinez in the front court and it's a layup as it's returned to Sundol and this game is tied. For the second time, an 11 to two run by Wall after they were down nine. Now it's tied at 19. With 6.50 left in the first half, and head coach Max Volt wants a 30-second timeout. He doesn't like the recent events. 6.50 left first half, 19-19 tie. Back in 30 seconds with more high school basketball here on KGFX. Spirit, nothing else comes near it. Owyhee Federal Credit Union, proud to be your hometown credit union since 1955. Federally insured by NCUA. A 10 0 run by Stanley County has been followed by an 11 2 run by Wall, and it's 19 all, a minute 10 gone in the second quarter. 
Stanley County, after using their first timeout, has Cormac Duffy inbounding left wing, a little short of quarter court. Back out front to Gavin Irving. To Cook, left of the lane. Nathan with a wall in the right corner for Prince. Out to Duffy, mid-left wing. Prince with a right baseline drive. Hooks a pass, but it's intercepted by Amy on Wallach for the lead. Down floor and layup, good! It was Sundahl who made the interception, and then it was Amy on who laid it in. And Wall's back in front, 21-19. Their run now 13-2. 6-22 in the first half. Fifth lead change. There were four in the first quarter. Nordstrom to Prince, right baseline. Irving for a cutting. Cook drives, counter with a foul. Nathan Cook has his second bucket. Hacked as he went to the 10 on the right baseline. Tie gives uh, Stanley County a tie game again at 21. The foul is on Reed Hansen, and that is two on him. And the fourth team foul, so that'll bring him out of the game and Nathan Law back in for Wall. Cook missed an opportunity to make a three-point play earlier. He'll have another here to put Stanley County back in front. It is good as it rolls in, went up the front rim and stayed down. 22-21 Stanley County back in front. 6-10 left in the first half here in Wall. Amy on with a left-hand dribble. Working on Titsy, but he lost the ball. Irving the other way is fouled, or do we have a travel first? Yep, the travel came first. Gavin lost his footing as the defender Krogman came over on him and commits the eighth Stanley County turnover. To Sundo and into the front court as Wall looks for another lead. Krogman in the lane, it is blocked. Cormac Duffy just sent it right back at him. And the rebound to Irving, down floor for a layup by Prince. Stanley County by three again at 24-21. Great defense there on the block. And Stanley County's up to a three-point lead again. 5.33 first half, the closely contested game we figured it would be so far. In the lane, Krogman took the feed from Sundahl for a layup. Krogman has two second quarter buckets, 24-23. Stanley County at 5.19 and a half. Duffy right wing open, tries a three off the rim. Sundahl the rebound. A shoelace has come on time. So that'll stop play for just a moment. And that'll bring Austin Olsen back in. It was Cedar Amy who had the lace that came loose. Gavin Irving and Evan Nordstrom come to the bench. So Jason Titsy's back in. So is Cormac Duffy. Here are the five on the floor for Wall. Tactinas. Cedar Amion, along with Austin Olson, King Krogman, and Nathan Law. 24-23, Stanley County. Five minutes left, first half. Bad pass is way over the head, skipping from Amion, but it was too far for Olson and out of bounds on the right wing. And Stanley County has it back. The Buffalo Five at the moment are Lathan Prince, Cormac Duffy, Dason Titsy, Strand Scott, and Nathan Cook. Scott uh, is the one who just came back into the game. Duffy has been in there for a while, of course. Right wing Cook. Into the right corner for Duffy. Ball fake, brings to the top of the right wing. Cross it to Prince, to Cook. Left corner for Titsy. Still 17 to shoot for Stanley County. A little too far for Prince, but he's able to run it down right wing. Now the shot clock says nine. Seven on the timer as Prince still dribbles near the timeline. Five to shoot as it's to Prince again. Three on the left wing with one on the shot clock. He hit it. Stanley County uses all 35, and Prince ends up with his second threes up to 12, and it's 27-23 buffs. Well, that ended up working out. Tina's in the right corner, tries another three. Off the back iron twice, and Duffy has the rebound. That almost fell down and stayed through. Front court, it is Prince. Drives, baseline, oh, off the rim. Law the rebound for Wall. But the pass is going And Dason brings it back out front. 27-23, Stanley County leading in wall. 3.40 left in the first half as Prince lobs on the right wing for Cook for the bus. At the basket to our right in purple. Left wing, it is Duffy into the lane. Stops from nine and hits. Round the left lane line. Cormac Duffy's second bucket. He has five, six points Stanley County lead. 29-23, 3.23 first half. 
Amy up for wall, across the timeline, right wing to Austin. Olsen, Prince, around the way of the pass, knocked it down, stolen all the way to the left baseline, tries a layup, misses, but Lathan's foul. He'll head to the line. Good quick hands there by Lathan Prince, leading to the steal, and eventually leading to the Austin Olsen foul on Wall. That's his first and the fifth team foul on the Eagles. Wall has five team fouls, and Stanley County has three. And it's Cormac Duffy, or Lathan Prince, I should say, to the foul line for the first time today, and he hit the first. Buffs are now five of seven and lead 30 to 23. Brody Sundle, Reed Hansen in for Wall. As Austin Olson and King Krogman come to Ryan Dinger's bench. Prince now with 13 as he looks to give Stanley County an eight-point lead. Here it comes. Good again. 14 for Lathan. 31-23 Stanley County. 3.15 left in the first half here in Wall. Amy Ott walks it across the timeline, looking at a Stanley County zone of the bucket to our left. Lob top of the right wing for Sundahl. Brody, quick player, into the right corner for Hansen. Skip it left wing for Tynes. Entry pass. Scott got a hand on it. Nathan Cook ended up taking it away. That was a hopeful pass, which didn't end in hope for Wall. Titsy out front. Left wing Prince, 245 in the half. Stanley County looks for the longest lead of the game so far. They have led by nine. They're right now up eight. Cook, right wing Duffy, open three. Halfway down and out, and the rebound came down to Reed Hansen. Tatinas, front court, stopping in the lane is Amiot for Sundo in the right corner. Again to Amiot, top of the wing, skip it for Tinas. Left wing got blocked by Duffy. A three chance and no chance there. Titsy the rebound, right corner, three is good by Prince. Lathan's third of the game. What a first half Lathan Prince is having. He has 17. And now it's Stanley County's longest lead at 11. 34-23. Two minutes left in the first half. Maybe they're coming out of this funk. Here is a pass that's intercepted. Tipped around. Came to Prince. Here he comes again and drives in for a right baseline layup. 19 for Lathan Prince. And Ryan Dinger, the wall head coach, wants a full timeout. And Stanley County is now up 13 at 36 23. 151 left first half. What a half for Lathan. Back in a minute with high school basketball on 1060 107.1 KGFX. Hi, this is Dr. John Rounds of Peer Physical Therapy and Rehab. I want to thank the community for a successful opening of our private practice physical therapy clinic in 2020. We want to help you reach your goals in 2021. Back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain? No problem. Give me a call at 494-0257 so we can help get you back in motion. Medicare and most major insurance is accepted. Remember, you have a choice where you get your physical therapy, so choose Peer PT. He weighs only 22 pounds. He sleeps most of the day, but he has a lot of squeaky toys. And who boy does he like to run. If your new puppy or other addition to your family has turned your starter home from cozy to cramped, it might be time to talk to a member of the First Dakota National Bank's home loan team about the competitive rates on our more room for the dog to run loans. Bank yourself at home with First Dakota because who knew a puggle could take up so much space? Equal lender member FDIC. Another big run for Stanley County makes in large part to Lathan Prince. Prince has 12 of the Buffalo's 17 second quarter points and 19 and a half. And it's Stanley County by 13 at 36 to 23 with 144 left in the first half. In the lane, a jumper is left short by Krogman. Cormac Duffy with a rebound, and Stanley County has taken charge of this game at least for the moment. Duffy. Spin, right lane line, jumper a little short. Strand Scott, offensive board, count it with a foul. They didn't block out Strand Scott, which I'll admit is not the easiest thing to do, but he scores to make it 38 to 23, and he is fouled by Ethan Ferguson, and that is his first and the sixth wall team foul. Strand Scott to seven, now to eight points as he hits the free throw. 39-23, Stanley County. What a run for the Buffs, 122 and a half. Sundle, it's bounced into the lane. Turnaround is touched by Stanley County. Call it a turnover as it's saved inbounds nicely by Prince. 
On the other end, up he threw it away as Sundol's able to take it in for Wall. To the baseline, left. He left it off the glass. And it's a Strand Scott rebound, and then it's knocked out of bounds. Down to one minute left in the first half. 52% shooting. Max Fulton like here in that number. After the struggles the Buffaloes have had with their shooting lately, Scott and Titsy out. Evan Nordstrom, Gab, and Irving back in for the Buffs, who lead it 39 23, a 16 point Buffalo lead. 55 seconds left in the first half. Up top is Nordstrom. 20 points second quarter so far for the Buffs, and there's still 48 seconds left. 18 to shoot. Left wing to Prince. What a first half Lathan's having. Right wing Duffy. Pass knocked down. Came right back to Cormac. 12 on the timer. Cook right lane line. Drives left baseline. Scooped it in. Nathan Cook with seven. The lead is 18 for Stanley County at 41-23. 28 seconds left in the half. Left corner, Ethan Ferguson. Bring it on the right side to Sundal. Shot clock's off for Wall. Tina's out front to Ferguson, right wing Sundell on the 13 seconds outside the arc. Amy up between the rings, fouled by Gavin Irving. That's only the fourth foul on the bus, so no free throws here. First foul on Gavin. 10.3 and Wall will inbound. Just a little short of quarter court, left sideline to the right of the Stanley County bench. Sundell on one bounce to Amy out, seven seconds. Bounce down low. Prince got a hand on it. It's loose on the floor. It ends up in a dual possession. And give it to Stanley County. And that is 14 first half turnovers now on Wall. They've had eight in the second quarter. 4.3. They've got to come full court. But the Buffs have a chance for at least a 20 point halftime lead. Lob to Cook at midcourt. To Prince with two seconds. One jumper, a little short. And it's rebounded by Cedar Amy on as the first half ends. What a second quarter for the Stanley County Buffaloes. They doubled up Wall 22 to 11, 12 of those points by Lathan Prince, who ended with a 19 point first half. And our halftime score on the Wegner Auto scoreboard here in Wall the Stanley County Buffaloes 41, the Wall Eagles 23. Wagner Auto, South Dakota's oldest auto dealer in Pier since 19. 07. Well, stick around for the CHS Midwest Cooperative Halftime Report. First half stats from this game, and we'll look at other high school basketball action today, too, including what's happened at the DWU Culver's Classic. We'll get all that going in two minutes. Glad to have you with us for high school basketball on 1060 107.1 KGFX. Live and archive video at the KGFX page of the DRG News app. Brought to you by Golden Buffalo and DRGnews.com. Now, we don't have to tell you that farming gets more complicated every year, but what we can do is bring you Allegiant Seed from CHS Mid Cooperative. Allegiant brings you leading traits that fits your farm plan perfectly. These are proven farm solutions made simple. And because Allegiant comes from a trusted team that knows your land, choosing Allegiant Seed might just be the simplest decision you make all season. For more information on Allegiant Seed, contact your local CHS Midwest Cooperative today. You have a lot of expenses to juggle as a business owner. Worrying about health insurance for your employees shouldn't be one. Avera Health Plans could save your business up to 30% on health insurance costs without compromising your employees' benefits. You get access to a large network of providers and specialists, as well as 24-7 virtual provider visits with Avera Now. Now that's a deal. We make getting a quote and switching employer plans easy. Call your agent or get a quote at averahealthplans.com slash save. Lower your payment with great rates from Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union. Now is the time to refinance your vehicle with rates as low as 2.49%, plus no payments for 90 days. The same friendly faces and customer service are at their new location, complete with convenient drive through lane on Garfield Avenue at the Northridge Plaza. Low rates and 90 days, no payments. Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union. Member NCUA. Insurance. We all need it to protect our homes, health, businesses, and belongings. But having adequate coverage is just the beginning. You also need the support of professionals who stand by your side to protect what's important to you. Fisher Rounds & Associates combines the coverage you want with the commitment you need. 
Fisher Rounds and Associates, at your service, at your sign, with offices in Pierre, Mitchell, Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. First quarter run by Stanley County of 10-0. Then Wall came back with an 11 to two run and took a lead early in the second quarter, but then Stanley County got it going thanks in large part to Lathan Prince. His 19 point first half leads the Stanley County Buffaloes to a 41-23 halftime lead in Wall over the Eagles. This is the CHS Midwest Cooperative Halftime Report. I'm David Burrell. Our studio coordinator is Heather Williams, and I'd better tell you that driven by the Office of Highway Safety, this is 1060 KGFX Pier. Rebroadcasting on K296FI 107.1 Fort Pier. Don't drink and drive. Stay alive. Of the 22 second quarter points for Stanley County, Lathan Prince had 12 of them. In 19 and a half, he had three threes, two of two at the line. Strand Scott with a good first half, he had eight. Nathan Cook with seven. Cormac Duffy with five. He also had three boards. Gavin Irving a couple of points and four rebounds too. Wall led by the seven of Cedar Amiot. Tactinas with a couple of early threes. Had six for the Eagles. Four for King Krogman. And two points each for Brody Sundle, Reed Hansen, and Nathan Law. Hansen leading Wall with four rebounds. The rebounding advantage to Stanley County, 15-13. And a Buffalo team that has really struggled to shoot the ball in this losing streak is not struggling today. They're at 52% in the first half on 15 of 29. Four of eight on threes. Three of them eight threes, of course, by Prince. And they're seven of nine at the line. Wall in the first half was 10 of 23 shooting. That's 43%. Two of five on threes. Made the only free throw they had a chance to take. A uh, big problem in the first half for Wall was turnovers. They had 14 of them and, in fact, uh, had nine in that second quarter. And that helped Stanley County jump out to their big lead. Rebounding advantage to Stanley County in that first half, 15 to 13. 41 23, Stanley County, as the Buffs come back on the floor. They have the halftime lead here in Wall over the Eagles. Let's look at what's happened today. First at the DWU Culver's Classic in uh, Mitchell at the Corn Palace. Not a good day for the Chamberlain Cubs. They played so well. Had a grinded out win over Wagner last night for their 12th win in a row. But well, today the shooting didn't go well and the Cubs lost to Hanson. Uh, pretty good to Beaver team, 56-42. Chamberlain only 30% shooting. They also got out rebounded in this game, so the 12-game winning streak comes to an end for the Cubs. And also today, it was Lyman coming from 10 down in the first half to defeat Bridgewater Emery in Mitchell by a score of 44-41. to Hey, got to tell you about a game coming up tonight on 94.5, 100.5 KPLO from that DWU Culver's Classic in Mitchell. It is White River, and you know what they did the other night if you follow Stanley County. They put up 80. They take on the number one team in Class B, the DeSmet Bulldogs. What a game that should be, and that's at around 7-10 this evening with Darren Boyle on KPLO, and I know what I'll be listening to on my way back to Pierre. That should be terrific. Potter County and boys play winning today in Timberlake. That final was 71 to 68 as those battlers keep playing good basketball. Back to Class A winner who of course held off the Governors in Pier last night. Lees in Hill City 41 to 33. Six minutes left in the third quarter of that game today. And uh, you get to the point where you're right in the regular season now and all these matchups become important. Wall knocked off uh, Stanley County in the girls' play earlier today, 44 to 20. Jordan Sosa had eight for the Buffaloes. And no girls, JV. You may be expecting to hear girls' action right now, but no girls, JV today. So that's why the boys' action has moved up. And we also want to tell you we're going to add another Buffalo boys' game to our schedule here on KGFX a week from Monday, February 22nd at Parkview Auditorium when they host Miller. Don't forget this coming Tuesday, it's the Buffs and Mobridge Pollock 
in boys action at Parkview. We'll have it for you around 725. And then the girls teams from these schools will play in Mobridge on Thursday night. And that'll be here also on KGFX. Andy Shoemaker will bring you that action at around 725. And that'll be on Thursday evening. Next for the Pier Governor girls, they will host the Tonka of Lakota Tech. And that'll be at the Riggs High Gym, 5.30 for that action with Brian on Tuesday on River 92.7. And then next Friday, the Governor boys with their final home game of the regular season against Sioux Falls Roosevelt, the Riggs High Gym on River 92.7 at 6.30. And the Governor girls will be here on KGFX next Friday night in Sioux Falls to take on Roosevelt at 6.30. And a week from tomorrow, Governor girls against Lincoln and Sioux Falls on River 92.7 at 4.30. And don't forget, a week, uh, that's next Saturday, that's Regional Wrestling Day. Brian will have reports from the 3A region in Chamberlain and uh, from uh, other schools. You know, Stanley County's going to host the 2B Regional at Parkview Auditorium next Saturday. But Brian will update you through the day next Saturday here on KGFX. And then Brian will be in Rapid City for what we think is the best coverage on radio of the South Dakota wrestling championships and that'll begin on thursday the 25th of february and that is our chs midwest cooperative halftime report well there's just over a limit left on the clock and now the wall eagles are just now making their way back onto the floor so we'll keep it here as the second half is about to get going but ryan dinger had a lot to say to his team as they kept it tight they were up 19 to 17 after an 11 to 2 run but then a run of 24 to 6 the rest of the way in the first half. And Stanley County has the 18 point lead with the second half about to begin. And they bring out their starting five of Lathan Prince, Cormac Duffy, Dason Titsy, Strand Scott, and Nathan Cook. Wearing purple with white numerals and letters in gold trim. And for Wall, it's Zach Tinas along with Brody Sundell, who normally starts, didn't start today because Austin Olsen started on senior day, but he does start the second half. Cedar Amiot, Reed Hansen, and Kane Krogman. The arrow points to Wall, so it'll be the Eagles basketball to start at the second half. The video, of course, ongoing at the KGFX page at the DRG News app and at drgnews.com. Stanley County will shoot at the bucket to your left as you view it in this first half. The start of the second half is brought to you by Lynn's Dakota Mart in Fort Pier. Then it'll be Tactinus to inbound to Cedar Amiot. And now it's Wall who needs another big run as they're down 18. Reed Hansen in the right corner for Sundall. On low. Oh, Krogan, tough catch, but he did catch it. Nearly dropped by Hansen, but he does regain it. Still 20 to shoot for Wall. Amiot in the lane. Left wing Sundall. That's a three, and it's good. Good start to the second half for Brody Sundall. And Wall is second bucket and fifth point. Third made three for Wall. It is 41-26, Stanley County. Pressure broken. Cook, bounce, Scott. Left baseline, but he missed it. And Krogman has the rebound. So the bus miss on their first chance of this second half. Right wing, it is Hanson. Reed now tries a right wing three. That's off the rim. Nathan Cook snags that rebound with some authority. And for Cook, just his fourth rebound... But again, a lot more makes today for Stanley County. Here's a left wing three. Prince trying for another one, but it didn't fall on the rebound to Reed Hansen. Well, why not? I mean, the way his first half went, and he's not going to stop shooting anyway. Right wing, it's a three by Sundahl, and he's good again. Brody Sundahl has hit two second half threes and a good start for Wall. They've cut the Stanley County lead to 12. 41-29, 6.35 left in the third. Sundahl's up to eight. Cormac Duffy for Stanley County. Skip to Prince, inside to Scott. Double team awaits, puts it in. No, he won't. Yeah, he put it in, but he won't. Hurt. The double team waited for him. And the 10th Stanley County turnover. You know, Strand's footwork is so good and, and has improved as this season has gone along, but took that little rocker step there. Sundle left foul line extended for Wall. Left wing Amy on outside the arc. Swing it on the right side into the right corner where Sundle now is. He's already hit two threes in this half. To Amy Ott in the lane. Bounce it for a fadeaway that's good on the right lane line by Hansen. 
Reed Hansen's second bucket, the first eight of the half for Wall. Stanley County's lead now at 10-41-31. They come down floor of the bus do. Scott back out to Titsy. Wall playing a 1-2-2 zone. Here's another travel, this one by Titsy. Boy, have we had the runs going in this game. 10-0 early for Stanley County, 11-2 for Wall. Then the huge run by Stanley County to end the half. Titsy and Scott out. Evan Nordstrom, Gavin Irving back in. Wall scored the first eight of this half, and they've cut an 18-point lead to 10. 41-31 SC, 5-35 in the third. Amy Ott lost it. It was deflected by Nordstrom. Went to the back court. Nearly knocking it away again, but then as Irving tried to gain it, he was falling upon, and they call Amy out for the foul, and that gives it to Stanley County. Amy out second, the first team foul, and head coach Ryan Dinger of Wall is not at all pleased with that call, and he's letting one of the officials know that. But once again, he's not changing his mind. Irving into the front court. It's a, it's a zone with some man principles here. They're kind of switching the defenses, Wall is. Looks like a zone, sometimes looks like a man defense. It is Irving with a floater on the right side, right of the lane that didn't fall, and it's rebounded by Reed Hansen, and the Buffaloes still have not scored in this second half with over three minutes play. Their lead was 18, now it's 10. Here's a three, a wild one by Tinas that's missing. And on the baseline, Evan Nordstrom had the rebound for Stanley County. Baseline, oh, a pass from Prince too far for Duffy and out of bounds. 12th turnover on Stanley County and now 3-14 into the third quarter and the Buffs still haven't scored in this second half. They are still up 10, but Wall has scored the first eight. Amy out for the Wall Eagles. Right of the lane, it's Tina's for a right wing three that missed everything by Reed Hansen. And down there for the rebound is Evan Nordstrom to Irving, trying to reverse it. Wild play, but Prince has it now. Up top, and head coach Max Foltz says, no, nah, no, nah, nah, this isn't going to work. Enough of this playground stuff. Let's take a 30-second timeout. We will, too. 424 in the third. Stanley County leading wall, 41-31. And we're back with more high school basketball action in 30 seconds here on KGFX. For reliable, safe, efficient, and economical electrical work, call Ferding Electric. Ferding Electric staffs licensed, knowledgeable electricians to help you with all your electrical projects. New construction, rewires, or upgrades, residential or commercial, Ferding Electric knows how to get the job done right. Call Ferding Electric at 224-8684. Stop in at 2903 East Elizabeth, just off the truck bypass. See Ferding.com or find them on Facebook. Ferding Electric, licensed electricians, quality service, and dependable products since 1956. Stanley County won some points. They've missed their first four shots of this second half. 424 remains in the third. 41-31 wall. They've scored all eight points that have been scored in this third quarter. Prince with a right baseline drive. Falls away. Scores again. Two and a half. He's up to 21. There breaks the drought. 43-31 Stanley County at 410 in the third. And traveling in midcourt is Tina's. For Wall, the 16th Eagle turnover. And Stanley County has it back. Their five are Lathan Prince, Cormac Duffy, Evan Nordstrom, Dason Titsy, and Nathan Cook. Titsy on the left side for the Buffs. Bring it to Prince. Bounces for Titsy out front, guarded tightly by Sundle. To Evan Nordstrom, stops left of the lane, bounces for Cook with a drive inside, but Sundle blocked it. Nice play by Brody Sundo on the rebound to Reed Hansen for Wall. With a chance again to cut it to 10 or 9. Left lane line, a jumper is good by Krogman from 14 feet. Kane Krogman with 6, 43-33, Stanley County by 10 again. 3-27 left in the third quarter. Prince right wing to Cook, right baseline, drives all the way, scores with a right hand. First two of the half for Nathan. He's up to nine. 45-33. Stanley County leads Wall. 313 in the third. Amy Ott wards off Nordstrom. 
Right wing Sundle back to Amy up middle of the wing. Right baseline drive over Cook and it rolled off and rebound chip came to Duffy. Good move, just did not stay down. Now on the other end, it is Prince and it pass went off of a wall player, not a bounds. Nathan Law back into the wall eagle lineup. He replaces whom? Is it Hanson? It is. Ethan Ferguson also come in, it comes in to replace Kane Krogman. 2.53 in the third. 21 points for Lathan Prince. He's helped Stanley County to a 45-33 lead over Wall. It was an 18-point Buffalo lead of the half. Lob to Cook, back into Duffy, who inbounded it, then laid it in left baseline. Seven for Duffy, 47-33 Stanley County at 2.43 in the third. Lob to Tinas, front court, right wing for Wall, right corner, Sundle. Right baseline, light lane line, half hook by Nathan Law misses. Duffy the rebound, Stanley County. In the lane is Prince, and he's called for a double dribble. Had a little bit of trouble fumbling the ball. Took a step after he had lost the dribble, then started the dribble again. He'll come out in favor of Gavin Irving. Five on the floor right now for Wall or Tactinas, Brody Sundle, Cedar Amia, Ethan Ferguson, and Nathan Law. Wall's lost four in a row. Stanley County has lost three straight. Oh, a little trouble nearly falling as Amiot. And, yes, he's called for a travel. He stumbled. Then actually lost the ball out of bounds. That's what happened. But either way, it's turnover number 17 for Wall. 2.15 in the third. Stanley County with the ball on a 14-point lead. A much better game so far for the Buffs today. Irving takes it all the way to the right baseline. And Gavin has his first bucket of the day. He's up to four. 49-33 Stanley County. Two minutes left, third quarter. Sundle turns around and a double team and he's lost his dribble and seeing that head coach Ryan Dinger of Wall wants a full timeout. We'll take a minute to a minute 54 left in the third Stanley County 49 Wall 33 high school basketball continues in one minute on 1060 107.1 KGFX. Hometown spirit, nothing else comes near it. Owyhee Federal Credit Union, proud to be your hometown credit union since 1955. Federally insured by NCUA. Hi, this is Dr. John Rounds of Peer Physical Therapy and Rehab. I want to thank the community for a successful opening of our private practice physical therapy clinic in 2020. We want to help you reach your goals in 2021. Back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain? No problem. Give me a call at 494-0257 so we can help get you back in motion. Medicare and most major insurance is accepted. Remember, you have a choice where you get your physical therapy, so choose Peer PT. And the girls' action has already happened here in Wall today. Wall for Stanley County, 44-20. to 20. A little bit of a change in the schedule because there was no JV girls game. So, again, we're going to add another Stanley County boys game to our schedule when they host the Miller Rustlers at Parkview Auditorium a week from Monday. And don't forget, Mobridge Pollock comes to town. That should be a good one on Tuesday night here on KGFX at 725. Bounce down low, went off a foot of Nathan Cook. Well, he only has two, so <laughs> it went off his right foot. Shot clock at 18 as Wall will inbound at the bucket to our right. Left baseline, just to the left of the bucket. Amy out with a bounce into Ferguson, hands it to Law. A little half hook is good for Nathan. Two buckets for him and four off the bench. 49-35, Stanley County, 138 in the third. Prince against pressure, but into the front court. Keeping it away from Amiot. Lost his dribble. Now to Duffy, right wing. To Cook on the right baseline. Down low to Scott on the other side. And Strand drew a foul. First, he made a nice little leap to make a catch of a high pass. Then he drew the foul on Tactinas. And that's Tax first. And Strand, who's two out of three at the line today, is back there for two shots. And the first is good. 50 to 35. Stanley County by 15. Nathan Law out, Reed Hansen back in for Wall. 
Nine points for Scott as he looks to make double figures with his second free throw. It's on the way. It's missing, and it's rebounded by Cedar Amia for Wall. 15 points, Stanley County lead at 50 to 35, 80 seconds left third quarter. In the lane, it's Reed Hansen. Left for Ferguson, outside the arc on right wing, between the rings. Now here's Amiot starting a drive, counted with a foul. Nice play by Amiot. He started from the half circle, went down the right side of the lane, laid it in, and drew the foul on Nathan Cook, his second. And that is the first team foul of the second half on Stanley County. Well, Wall's had only two. Krogman back in for Ferguson for Wall. Cook out. Evan Nordstrom back in for Stanley County. Now Amy Ott will try to complete the three-point play, and it missed, and a foul on the rebound on Wall. A push by Reed Hansen trying to gain position. That's his third foul. He pushed Scott. Team foul number three on Wall. Hansen out, and Ryland McDonald makes his first appearance for Wall. He's a six-foot sophomore. 109 in the third. Stanley County 50, Wall 37. Against pressure, long pass into the front court from Nordstrom to Prince. One minute left in the third. A 13-point Stanley County lead, and they have the ball. They led by 18 at the half. Prince right wing, open for a three. Took it from Duffy, missed it. Rebounded by Amiot. Chance again for Wall to draw a little bit closer, but they turn it over coming down floor. Travel. Turnovers have been a problem for Wall today. That is number 18 for the Eagles. 47.6 in the third. Duffy in the titsy against some pressure. Hands it to Prince and across the timeline. Screened by Scott. That allows Prince to drive, but he's fouled before he does. He did make the shot, but... It won't count as the foul was way, way out. And the officials say, no, 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 no. We're not going to count that. But we will give you the foul, guys. It's a foul on King Krogman of Wall. That is his first. And that is the fourth team foul on the Eagles in the second half. 38.7 in the third. As the bounce is to Titsy in the right corner. To Scott right baseline. Turns around. Oh, nice play. Found Duffy and put it in. He was waiting for Cormac Duffy to cut. Cormac did. He's up to nine. 52-37, Stanley County at 25 seconds. Wall with it again. Nope, not now, because it is Nordstrom stealing it. Drove for the layup. Missed, but Titsy the rebound for a left corner three. Good. It's Lathan Prince again. His fourth made three. And it's 55-37, Stanley County. Answering with two seconds, missing a three by Sundle. It came to Duffy as the third quarter ends and Stanley County has built that lead back up to where it was at the half. 55-37 over Wall, it's 18. On the Wagner Auto scoreboard, Wagner Auto, the one place to go. Fourth quarter in one minute from Wall on 1060, 107.1 KGFX. He weighs only 22 pounds. He sleeps most of the day, but he has a lot of squeaky toys. And who, boy, does he like to run. If your new puppy or other addition to your family has turned your starter home from cozy to cramped, it might be time to talk to a member of the First Dakota National Bank's home loan team about the competitive rates on our more room for the dog to run loans. Bank yourself at home with First Dakota because who knew a puggle could take up so much space? Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. How you move matters. Avera Orthopedics helps you move freely and live life to the fullest with innovative treatment options customized to your bone, muscle, and joint needs. Whether you suffer from aches, breaks, tears, or dislocations, turn to the orthopedic team experienced in treating every body. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. That 3 for Lathan Prince gives him 24. He leads all scores. Cedar Emion leading Wall with nine. Fourth quarter, and Stanley County with the arrow in the ball with an 18 point lead, just what it was at the half. 55 37. 
Prince for Stanley County of the bucket to our left. Drives, left the layup short. Cook with a follow. That missed two, and it's rebounded by Amy. Wall in need of a big run. A left corner three. This one's missing. By Sundle. Leighton Prince the rebound. Down floor to Scott on the baseline. That shot missed. Held ball on the rebound. Give it to Wall. The lead 18 for Stanley County, 55-37. First 40 seconds of the third quarter. Good bounce pass. Well, Hanson wasn't ready for it, but his teammate Amy out there to pick it up. Then fumbled by Krogman, but to his teammate Hanson. Right wing for Sundle. Bounce it back out front. Tina's dropped it, but then he's fouled by Lathan Prince, who is in disbelief. But it's his second foul. Just the second team foul of the second half on Stanley County. 7.09 left. Brody Sundle will inbound for Wall right in front of the Eagle bench. Hands it to Amy up right of the half circle, in the half circle now. Lobs it right baseline. Sundle, banker scores. Brody Sundle's up to 10. He leads Wall. 55-39 Stanley County. 6.50 left in the fourth quarter here in Wall. Cook right wing to Prince. Deflected off two hands, run down on the backcourt by Cook. He touched it, and nobody else did. That means a backcourt violation. Stanley County's 14th turnover, and Wall is the basketball back. Max Foth isn't so sure, but the official's explaining why that's the case. I think Max Foth and Wall player touched it, but no one had. Ethan Ferguson in for Cedar Amiot. Ferguson joins for Wall, Tactinas, Brody Sundle. Reed Hansen and Kane Krogman on the floor. Wall basketball with 6.41 left. Stanley County by 16 at 55-39. They led by 18 at the end of the second and at the end of the third. Bounce from Sundle to Hansen. Ferguson now skipping the left wing for Sundle. He tries another three, and this one's off the rim. And Nathan Cook brings the rebound down for Stanley County. And with a big lead, they just walk it casually across the timeline with Titsy. For Prince on the left wing. Back for Titsy on the right side, middle of that wing. At the bucket to our left, Stanley County in purple. Wall in white. Our video going at the KGFX page of the app and at drgnews.com too. Two minutes gone in the fourth. Cook starts from outside the arc. Brings it inside with seven to shoot. And it rolls in in the middle of the lane for Strand Scott. And 11 now for Strand. 18-point lead again for Stanley County, 57-39. Left wing for a three. This is missing by Ferguson. And Nathan Prince with a rebound. And Stanley County, only five and a half minutes away, it appears, from breaking their three-game losing streak. Cook with a baseline drive right. He hit it. Cook with 11. 59-39, the first 20-point lead of the game for Stanley County. Three by Hanson for Wall is short but deflected and came to Brody Sundle. So the Eagles still have it. Now a three by Tina's missed everything and is out of bounds. And it'll go to Stanley County. He brings Gavin Irving and Evan Nordstrom back into the game. Cedar Amios back in for Wall. The five on the floor for Stanley County are Lathan Prince, Cormac Duffy, Evan Nordstrom, Gavin Irving, and Nathan Cook. And the Buffalo's lead is 20. Two weeks since they've won, they're playing as well today as they did that day. Irving, good catch, left baseline. Cook left the shot short, gained his own board, follows and scores. 13 for Cook, a 22-point Stanley County lead. 61-39, 4.45 left. Ferguson on the right baseline for Krogman. Turn around from seven in the lane, misses. Gavin Irving with a rebound. And Max Foth says, just slow it down, guys. Four and a half minutes to go. Duffy, up oh, the pass too far for Nordstrom. Out of bounds. It'll be wall basketball as the Eagles bring Brody Sundle back in and making his first appearance today is Kalen Spotted Bear, a freshman. Kalen is 6-1. Pass in the front court for Sundle on right wing. 
Wall down 22, in danger of losing their fifth straight. Spotted Bear, lost his dribble, then lost the ball. They intercepted it. Back to Duffy, and he walks it across the timeline. We're down to 4-10 to play. Stanley County in charge up by 22. Ball fake, good one by Duffy. Oh, great catch by Cook, but then his shot is blocked, but a foul is called two. Reed Hansen a little bit exasperated because he thought he had a clean block, but the foul is on him instead. That's his fourth. Team foul number five. Cook at the foul line. He's one for two there today. Short on the first one. Buffs eight of 12 at the foul line now. Hansen out. I think he needed a rest more than anything else. Nathan Law's back in. Cook will shoot another. Look for his 14th point with 4.03 left. This one rolls in. 62-39, Stanley County's longest lead now at 23 with four minutes left. Bounce to Spotted Bear on the left baseline. Prince in his way. In the half circle, it is Law. And a pass is thrown out of bounds. Wall turns it over again, number 21. And a team struggling. It's been over two weeks since they've won. And they had one good run today, but turnovers have hurt them. And, well, Lathan Prince has hurt them as much as anything. 24 for him, 19 in the first half. To Irving on the left baseline, through one set of legs. But then it came to Nordstrom, had his shot blocked, and then it's knocked out of bounds by Wall. And will stay with the Buffs. is back into the game for Wall. He replaces Cedar Amy on. 16 to shoot. Ball didn't hit the rim. Duffy out front to Prince. 3.30 to go. Pass to Duffy. Dropped it. Regained it. Lobbed for Cook. Down low. Threw a double team. Laid it in. 16 for Nathan Cook. He's having a great second half. So are the Buffs. They're having a great day. They're up 25 now. 64, 39, 315. Left Bauman Lumber will bring you our player of the game following this one. It is Ferguson up front again. The girls' action has already happened with Wall winning 44-220. Sundell on the right baseline for a left wing three. Good. That's Kalen Spotted Bear who came into the game not long ago. And he cuts the Stanley County lead to 64-41. to They only put a two on the board. Duffy left it short. Rebound tipped around. Came to Lathan Prince looking for Cook. And he traveled. So they're going to say that's a two by Spotted Bear and not a three, but he did hit the jumper. Now, some of the starters come to the bench, including Prince. Jamie Juarez, Ricardo Garcia into the game. This one looks to be well in hand for Stanley County with 2.39 left. They lead 64-41. What a day for Prince. 24. Sundle for Wall, oh, nearly fell, but he's still somehow able to maintain the dribble. Nice job between the rings to Ferguson. 2.25 left. At the foul line, it's Law. Took the return pass from Sundle and put it in from nine feet. And then Law wants a timeout with 2.18 left. We'll take 30 here. Wall takes the time up, but it's Stanley County with a lead. 64-43 here in Pennington County. And more coming for you in 30 seconds here on 1060 107.1 KGFX. Lower your payment with great rates from Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union. Now is the time to refinance your vehicle with rates as low as 2.49%, plus no payments for 90 days. The same friendly faces and customer service are at their new location, complete with convenient drive through lane on Garfield Avenue at the Northridge Plaza. Low rates and 90 days, no payments. Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union, member NCUA. Don't forget it is probably, almost certainly, a Sodak 16 play-in preview. It's almost certain it's going to be Mobridge Pollock and Stanley County to meet in that first week of March. But before that, they'll play a regular season game at Parkview Auditorium on Tuesday night. And we'll have it for you here on KGFX at around 725. 
218 left here. Looks like Stanley County is going to go into that, having broken their three-game losing streak. They're leading 64-43 to here in Wall. Duffy inbounds to Gavin Irving. 215 left as Gavin comes across the timeline. Left wing for Ricardo Garcia. A chance to play here at the finish with a big Stanley County lead. He hands it to Duffy and to Irving between the rings. Gavin on the left wing for Duffy with a left baseline drive, and he scores the layup. And Duffy becomes the fourth Buffalo in double figure in scoring. He has 11. 66-44, 43, I should say, for Stanley County. With 146 left. A left wing three is missing by Ferguson, and Ricardo Garcia gets on the stat sheet, pulling him a rebound to Irving. Jay Beers are going to come in for Wall, too, at the next dead ball. Lob inside for Strand Scott. Turn around, little half hook. He scores! Strand Scott has 13. Good feed, too, from Cormac Duffy. And timeout called by Ryan Dinger, but just to put these young Jay Beers in, Mason Zeller and Ben Admondson and Sawyer Sandal and Dawson Hess. They're all into the game for Wall. 125 left, 68-43 Stanley County. They're going to stop this three-game losing streak and go back above 500 at 8 and 7. Our Bowman Lumber player of the game coming up in our post game. Again, the girls' actions already happened today with Wall winning 44 to 20. Good play by Gavin Irving to strip it from behind and force another turnover. 22 on Wall today. We're 65 seconds away from the finish of this one of what's been a fine afternoon in Wall for the Stanley County Buffaloes. Shot better. Some turnovers, but they are cut down from what they have been lately. Here's Juarez with a drive. Left wing. Here's an Irving three. It is short. Juarez. Oh, good cross. Rebound. Finds Fredrickson in the lane, and he left it short. And it's knocked out of bounds, but knocked out of bounds by Wall. Or, excuse me, uh, the official pointed the wrong way. It, it will be Wall basketball. But Juarez got a rebound there. 39 seconds to go. One more possession for Wall in this game. Out front, here comes a three that's off the rim by Olsen, who's back in there on his senior day. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Stanley County. Admondson, who's out briefly, is back in, replacing Dawson Hess. 29.7 left. Olsen for Mason Zelfer, who's come into the game. Back to Olsen, a right baseline drive, and all rolled off. Oh, too bad on his senior day. Strand Scott with the rebound, and Stanley County can run this clock out. And in 12 seconds, their three-game losing streak's going to come to an end after a very solid effort. They'll run their offense with the younger players on the floor, drive on the baseline, missing by Juarez, gained his own board and missed that one too. But the Stanley County Buffaloes with a very solid effort today. And the three-game losing streak comes to an end most convincingly. Our final score on the Wagner Auto scoreboard in Wall. The Stanley County Buffaloes 68. The Wall Eagles 43. Stanley County improves to... Eight and seven with this victory. Wall's fifth straight loss. They're now seven and nine. That's on the Wegner Auto scoreboard. Wegner Auto, South Dakota's oldest auto dealer in Pier since 1907. Don't forget that blizzard sale. Not too far away. Stay tuned for the CHS Midwest Cooperative post game. We'll look at the final numbers. We'll also name our Bauman Lumber player of the game. That all comes to you from Wall in two minutes. This is High School Basketball on 1060, 107.1 KGFX. Each South Dakota farmer operates differently, and that means that ag insurance should be as unique as every farmer in the field. Fisher Rounds & Associates gets to know you and your operation before we find a policy. That way, we can make sure you have the coverage you need. Contact Fisher Rounds & Associates and see what it means to have us at your service and at your side. Fisher Rounds and Associates, serving South Dakota farmers with offices in Pierre, Mitchell, Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. 
For reliable, safe, efficient, and economical electrical work, call Ferding Electric. Ferding Electric staffs licensed, knowledgeable electricians to help you with all your electrical projects. New construction, rewires, or upgrades, residential or commercial, Ferding Electric knows how to get the job done right. Call Ferding Electric at 224-8684. Stop in at 2903 East Elizabeth, just off the truck bypass. See Ferding.com or find them on Facebook. Ferding Electric, licensed electricians, quality service, and dependable products since 1956. Hometown spirit, nothing else comes near it. A wide credit union, proud to be your home credit union since 1955. Heard by NCUA. There's an app for everything, including high school sports from the stations of DRG Media Group. Download the DRG News app brought to you by the Golden Buffalo Casino from the App Store or Google Play. It only takes a moment, so you'll have it to replay this game. See live and archived video of all games. And when you select your favorite station during the live stream, the video will immediately pop up. See Central South Dakota High School Sports on your phone or mobile device with the DRG News app brought to you by the Golden Buffalo Casino. Download it now at the App Store or Google Play. Well, this game was precisely what the Stanley County Buffaloes needed after being beaten three in a row and being routed in three in a row, two of which were on their home floor. They come to the wall today, have a huge first half from Lathan Prince and storm past the Wall Eagles. 68-43 to is today's final. Prince with 24. He had 19 in the first half. He had four threes. One of four Buffaloes who were double figures in scoring. Nathan Cook with 16. Six rebounds today for Nathan. Strand Scott had 13. Cormac Duffy with 11. Gavin Irving with four. Just five players scored for the Buffs. Brody Sundle led Wall with 10. He had a couple of threes. Cedar Amy on a pretty good game. 9.6 rebounds. Six each for Tactinas. Those were on two early threes on his senior day. King Krogman and Nathan Law. Reed Hansen at four. He also had seven rebounds. And Kaylin Spotted Bear with a late two. Shooting for Stanley County the other night in the game against White River was in the 20 percentage. Today, 48%. 27 of 56. 5 of 12 on threes. 9 of 13 at the line. Wall shot 41% today on 19 of 46. 4 of 17 on threes. They only got to the line twice and made one. Rebounding advantage for Stanley County, 31 to 24. Stanley County had 16 turnovers, and Wall had 22. 18 bench points. Of course, Sundell provided uh, more than half of those. He, of course, as we say, would normally start. He did not today because Austin Olson was given the chance to start on his senior day. But Stanley County takes it by 25, 68 243. Well, our Bauman Lumber player of the game. Time to name him before we say so long, and we'll do that when we return to Wall in 30 seconds here on KGFX. When you need building supplies, there's no need to go anywhere except Bauman Lumber in Fort Pier. Bauman Lumber is locally owned and offers quality products, expert advice, free estimates, and free local delivery for large or small projects. Whether it's a home improvement project, remodel job, or all new construction, they even welcome special orders. Quality building material and affordable prices for residential or commercial products can be found at Bauman Lumber. 1223 Sale Barn Road in Fort Pier or Call 223-9762. Well, there were several guys who were good for Stanley County today, without a doubt, but the reason this one went in uh, the Buffalo's favor and for the, for the large measure of it was Lathan Prince. With his enormous first half, he had 19. He ended the game with 24, and that was in three quarters. And Lathan today with a big day hitting four three-pointers. A couple weeks ago, he had 20 in that victory, that overtime win at Lower Brule, which had been Stanley County's last win before today. He was our player of the game that day, and he is again today our Bauman Lumber player of the game. want to remind you again that uh, the Buffaloes on Tuesday night will host Mowbridge Pollock at Parkview Auditorium. 
And again, almost without a doubt, that's going to be the game in the first week of March that will determine uh, one of the games from Region 6A that will determine who goes to the Sodak 16. But Stanley County in a desperate bid now to try to catch the Tigers for second. They were about two and a half seed points behind going into today. Uh, Mulbridge Pollock was playing this afternoon too. But that game at Parkview Auditorium around 725 on Tuesday evening right here on KGFX. And then on Thursday evening, the Buffalo Girls will end their regular season. That'll be in Mulbridge Pollock against the Tigers around 725 here on KGFX. Andy Shoemaker will bring you that action. The Buffalo Girls, again, uh, that game's already happened. They lost earlier today to Wall 44 to 20. Jordan Sosa had eight. Again, the schedule a little bit different as uh, there was no girls JV game today. So again, Tuesday for our next Buffalo action. The South Dakota Office of Highway Safety, they celebrate being part of the team. They remind you to buckle up every trip, every time. Couple of scores of note today. Chamberlain's 12-game winning streak came to an end. Cubs lost to Hanson 56-42 at the DWU Culver's Classic at the Corn Palace in Mitchell. Lyman before that had rallied from 10 down in the first half to beat Bridgewater Emery by a final of 44 to 41 tonight. What should be a terrific game in the, mm, no, about an hour and 15 minutes or so. Darren Boyle will be back on the air on 94.5, 100.5 KPLO for White River and DeSmet. That should be a terrific game. On your way home from the game, the South Dakota Office of Highway Safety reminds you, don't fear for deer, slow down and stay alert. High school basketball on 1060, 107.1 KGFX, brought to you by First Dakota National Bank, Avera St. Mary's Hospital, Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union, Fisher Rounds and Associates Insurance and Real Estate, Ferding Electric, Oahe Federal Credit Union, and Peer Physical Therapy and Rehab. The archive of this game on video available shortly at the KGFX page at the DRG News app, brought to you by Golden Buffalo and DRGnews.com. It's brought to you by Bauman Lumber and Wagner Auto. And our video scoreboard sponsor, Sioux Nation in Fort Pier. And our in-game sponsors include Becky Potts of State Farm Insurance, the South Dakota Office of Highway Safety, the South Dakota Attorney General's Office, Division of Consumer Protection, Lynn's Dakota Martin, Fort Pier, CHS Midwest Cooperative, Bauman Lumber, and Wagner Auto. Thanks to Athletic Director Lex Heathershaw here in Wall. And he took good care of us today. We very much appreciate it. Thanks also to our studio coordinator, Heather Williams. I'm David Burrell. The Stanley County Buffaloes break out of their losing streak and do so convincingly. The final score one more time on the Wagner Auto scoreboard. The Stanley County Buffaloes 68, the Wall Eagles 43. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Good evening from Wall.